Hey guys, Professor Dave here. I want to tell you about conformational analysis. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So let's take a look at a very simple molecule, a molecule of ethane, C2H6. Ethane is comprised entirely of single covalent bonds, or sigma bonds, and if we recall, sigma bonds are comprised of overlapping uh, molecular orbitals so they can rotate freely, which means any single covalent bond is constantly rotating. So if we rotate this carbon-hydrogen bond, not much would really happen, but if we rotate this carbon-carbon bond, actually the molecule is going to assume different shapes called conformations. And what that has to do with is the uh, energy associated with these different conformations with respect to how close or far away these neighboring groups are, whether they're a little bit closer or whether they're a little bit farther away. So we're going to want to be able to analyze these conformations uh, and, and be able to draw them too using things called Newman projections. The way we're used to seeing ethane in line notation looks like this. And we want to understand that these four atoms, those two hydrogens and those two carbons, are in the plane of the board there. And then here's the wedge and dash down there on this carbon, and here's the wedge and the dash projecting upwards on this carbon. And so we can see how this is what we're trying to represent on the board when we draw this way. But if we want to examine, if we want to do conformational analysis, then we're going to have to look at this molecule in a slightly different way. We're going to want to look directly down a carbon-carbon bond. So basically it's as though we're placing ourselves in the board looking this way, and so looking at this model, this is what we're doing. We're looking directly down this bond. Okay? And the reason we want to do that is because we want to understand something about the uh, orientation or the configuration of these groups on this carbon uh, and in relation to the groups that are projecting from the back carbon. So in order to uh, draw this and analyze it, we're going to draw something called a Newman projection, and that's this here. So when we look at a Newman projection, what we want to understand is that we are looking directly at this carbon, this front carbon, okay, and that is what is represented by the circle. The circle is the front carbon. Now because we're looking directly at this carbon, the carbon behind it and the bond connecting them cannot be seen. We can imagine this as like a cylinder that we're looking directly at the front of. So the back carbon and the bond between them cannot be seen. But what we can see are the six groups that are projecting from these two carbons. So we take a look at the front carbon. All we need to do is draw the three groups projecting at precisely the angle that we see them. So if we're looking head on, we see a hydrogen atom directly down and so that's why this bond originates from the center, because these groups are on the front carbon, so we can see the front carbon and the entirety of the bond projecting to the group in question. So we see straight down a hydrogen, and then up and both to the right and to the left, we see two other hydrogen atoms. So these are the three hydrogen atoms projecting from the front carbon. That's why the bonds to those groups originate at the center of that circle. Now, we can't see the carbon behind the front carbon, uh, but we can see the three groups projecting from them. Now, these bonds will start at the edge of the circle to represent the fact that they are connected to the carbon that cannot be seen behind the front carbon. So these lines will originate at the sides and we will see a hydrogen directly upwards and we will see hydrogens directly or, uh, to the left and right uh, uh, downwards here as well. Okay, so this Newman projection represents precisely this conformation of ethane. And we would call this an eclipsed, or sorry, we would call this a staggered conformation because of the dihedral angle here between groups. So this is a 60 degree dihedral angle. This is the furthest away that these groups can be as they rotate before starting to become closer to one another. So the other uh, conformation for ethane would be eclipsed. And so we can see here that these hydrogen atoms, and actually all of them, are eclipsing one another. In other words, they're directly overlapping. Okay, and there's uh, a lot to discuss uh, in terms of energy here. But so we have eclipsed, and then as it rotates to a 60 degree dihedral angle, we have our staggered conformation, which is the furthest these groups can be from one another. And then further, we would go back to another eclipsed conformation. So now let's go ahead and analyze the energies uh, between these different conformations. 
So every atom is surrounded by an electron cloud, and electrons repel one another because they're of like charge. So that means that uh, every group projecting from this carbon is going to want to be as far away as it can be from the groups projecting from this carbon. And the closer they will be to one another, the more steric hindrance there will be, uh, and the higher the molecule will be in potential energy. Think of it like a compressed spring or magnets of like charge that are held closely to one another. The potential energy wants to be converted into the kinetic energy of motion, so a compressed spring will have a tendency to relax, and magnets of like charge held, one held closely to one another will have a tendency to push each other away. Now, as it happens, it's the eclipsed conformation that has the groups more closely together. As you can see, this distance here is shorter than if we go to the staggered conformation. There's the normal distance plus a lateral distance. So then you're making a triangle and the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest. So that means that the staggered conformation holds the groups as far away as they can possibly be while still obeying the normal uh, bond lengths. So let's take a look here. So let's take a look at this first staggered conformation. So here is that. We can see the Newman projection, hydrogens going up and then down to the left and right on the front carbon, and then staggered on the back there. So that is that confirmation. Now let's rotate the back carbon until we get to that first eclipsed confirmation. That's up here. So all the while from this confirmation here, the potential energy was rising as these groups begin to get closer to one another, as the dihedral angle shrinks to zero to get that eclipsed conformation. And then, as they continue, we will go back down to the next staggered conformation, which will be identical in energy to the other because these are all identical hydrogen atoms. But this is a measurable energetic difference. And in fact, we can measure that. It's 12 kilojoules per mole, meaning if you had a, a mole of ethane molecules all in the eclipsed conformation, they would exist at 12 kilojoules more potential energy than entirely staggered. So this can be measured, and it's important uh, to understand this to be able to assess certain things about reaction mechanisms. So let's take a look at a slightly more complicated molecule, molecule butane, C4. So here's the four carbons. We're going to look directly down the C2-C3 bond. That's the central bond. So here's our butane. That's uh, how we would look at it in line notation, right? And now what we're going to do is look directly down the C2-C3 bond. So here are the middle two carbons. So we're looking directly down, directly through this carbon and through that bond. So it's really the same as ethane, it's just that uh, if, we, if we took ethane and replaced one of the hydrogens on each carbon with a methyl group, we'd get butane. And so here we can see butane in a staggered conformation. So here is the front carbon, and we can see that the three groups projecting from the front carbon are directly upwards. We have this methyl group. CH3, and then down and to the left and right, we have our two hydrogens. So that would be here, CH3, and then our two hydrogens. From the back carbon, we can see that up and to the left and right are these two hydrogen atoms, and then directly downward, we have this methyl group. So that's why these groups, uh, with, the, with the bonds originating from the edge of the circle, we have hydrogen, hydrogen, and then a methyl here. Now, this is a staggered conformation, and now that we've introduced one different group, it's not all the same group, the same hydrogens, there's methyl and hydrogens, that introduces a discrepancy in the energies of the different staggered conformations. This is necessarily the best and lowest energy uh, conformation, and it is called the anti-conformation, and that is because this methyl group and this methyl group are in an anti-configuration with respect to one another, meaning they are as far away from each other as they can be. This is very important because the methyl groups, being much larger than these individual hydrogen atoms, generate more steric hindrance. So having these methyl groups closer together uh, puts the molecule at a higher energy than if hydrogen atoms are closer to one another. So that means the anti-conformation is the lowest energy conformation that we can have. Another kind of uh, staggered uh, interaction would be this. Now, <clears throat> this is a gauche conformation. It is still a staggered conformation. We can see everything in the front is the same. But now we have the methyl group still, still with a 60 degree dihedral angle, but on this position up and to the right, 
which is closer to the other methyl group. Now, because these are much larger groups, that is, going to, that is going to generate a lot more steric hindrance, and so this is a gauche interaction. We would say that these methyl groups are gauche to one another, and that places this conformation at a higher energy than this. However, while anti is the lowest, gauche being the next lowest, because also this would also be a gauche interaction, all of the eclipsed interactions are at higher energies than these staggered interactions. However, there's a, there is a discrepancy between the eclipsed conformations as well. Here is one eclipsed interaction, right? We can see that this methyl group is directly over this hydrogen. We can see that these hydrogens are directly over one another, and we can see this hydrogen directly in front of this methyl group. So there is some steric hindrance associated with this conformation. Now, that is not as much steric hindrance, however, as this fully eclipsed conformation where the methyl groups are directly over one another. Now, that has the most steric hindrance because that places the largest electron clouds very close to one another, so this will have the highest energy energy of all the possible conformations. And there you have it, anti being the lowest energy, increasing in energy to the fully eclipsed, and then back to anti. So in your class, you're probably going to be asked to draw Newman projections. So I wanted to go over an example to see if we can clarify how to do this. So I drew an arbitrary molecule. Now, in order to draw a Newman projection, you're going to have to agree about which bond we are discussing and which direction we are looking at it from. So let's say I've drawn this. So this means that I want to look directly down this bond and from this direction. So that means this is the front carbon, this is the back carbon. So what we want to do Okay, here's our circle. This represents the front carbon, which we've agreed is this. Now, what are the three groups that are projecting from the front carbon? Well, we have a fluorine atom, we have a hydroxyl group, and then we have an implied hydrogen. Don't forget the implied hydrogen that would be on a dash bond. So, where, in which direction are these projecting, considering the fact that we are basically placing ourselves in the plane of the board? So, what I notice is that the fluorine group is directly down from me and also in the plane of the board. So we're going to draw a straight line down for that fluorine atom. Now, the wedge bond means that this hydroxyl group is projecting out of the board. So that means from my position on the left, this wedge bond is, or, or if I'm on this side of the molecule, that means that the hydroxyl group is projecting up and to the left because it is out of the board this way. So that is going to be up here. And then that implied hydrogen that would be on the dash bond, which is going into the board, if I'm over here, that's up and to my right. So here's that hydrogen. So that covers the front carbon. Now here's the back carbon that we cannot see, but we can see the groups that are projecting from the back carbon. So what do we see? Well, from this side, anything on a wedge bond will be going to the left. So this chlorine is going down and to the left. Now don't forget, if we are looking from the other side of the molecule over here, anything on a wedge bond would be going to our right. So try not to associate dash and wedge with left or right, because it depends what side of the molecule you're on. So, but from this perspective, the chlorine atom on the wedge bond is going down and to my left out of the board. So let's draw that there. The bromine atom on this dash bond is going down and to my right into the board. So I'm going to draw that there. And then the rest of the molecule, whatever it may be, in this case an ethyl group, you can either just draw two lines or perhaps your professor wants you to draw CH2, CH3, basically whatever else is going on. We're not interested in the conformation around these bonds. We're strictly looking at this bond only. So CH2, CH3 will suffice to describe the rest of the molecule there. So this is uh, an accurate Newman projection for uh, this carbon-carbon bond in this direction. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. And as always, feel free to email me with questions, professordaveexplains at gmail.com.